I want to read you a verse of scripture. And uh, for the preacher, for the pastor, there is no better uh, text uh, to study, uh, to understand ministry and, and the, the calling of God on your life like First and Second Timothy. And you'll find Paul gives Timothy a whole lot of advice uh, concerning uh, ministry. But this, this afternoon I want to I want to look at First Corinthians chapter number nine, and want to read one verse of scripture to you, and uh, try to give you this thought. First Corinthians chapter number nine. Look at verse number sixteen. The Bible says, "For though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of. For necessity is laid upon me. Yea." Woe is unto me. Woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we love you. Pray you'd touch us, help us, and honest us, use us. Pray you'd speak into the hearts of these dear men. Father, I pray you'd give us clarity of mind and speech, unction, liberty, and power. Father, I pray, uh, Lord, you'd touch unprofitable servant. Father, whatever you do for us, we'll be careful to thank you and praise you. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. This afternoon, I want to deal with preachers. Uh, the Lord has been very, very kind to me through the years. I preached my very first message December 26th, the day after Christmas, 1997. That means this December, I will have been a gospel preacher for 24 years. Uh, I, I, I have made a lot of mistakes I've said some things, done some things I wish I hadn't done. Uh, but I have learned some things through those 24 years. Uh, I said last night, I've pastored the same church for 15. I've done evangelism for 20 or better. And uh, pastored a church full time uh, during that time. And uh, I, I don't say this pridefully. It, it is all the Lord. Uh, but the next seven weeks, I am book five of them. And then I, I, and when I'm not preaching, I get home, pastor my church, and pack and go again. Uh, and so I spend the majority of my life, my wife and I were going down the road the other day, and we were figuring up. You'll have, to, you'll have to make the exception for COVID. But prior to that, I preached 300 times a year, 300 times a year, and have for a long time. Yeah. And uh, so I, I, I am no, I'm no expert by any means. Uh, but I have learned a few things. Uh, yeah. If you come to my office, uh, in, on my desk, uh, for many years, there was a picture of all the guys I started with. A picture uh, of my, me, my pastor, and all the preachers in our church. And a while back, I began to look at that picture, and I began to count the guys that are still in the ministry. Mm -hmm. Out of 17, 18 guys, there's four mm -hmm. that are still preaching. Some of them aren't even in church. Some of them certainly aren't preaching. Uh, four out of 17 or 18. So in the last 20 years or so, nearly three-quarters of them have fallen off and have fallen out. And this morning, this afternoon, you realize the highest calling on the planet is to be a God-called preacher. Uh, it is the most rewarding job I've ever had. But may I say this, the most difficult job you'll ever have. Yeah. And it is a, I would have to take a demotion, a step down to be the president of the United States, Amen. to be a doctor or a lawyer. And you say, why would you say that? Well, because at best, the work of the president is temporary. Right. A doctor may come up with some miracle life-saving uh, procedure that'll save your life, but guess what? You're still going to die. Yeah. A lawyer may come up with a brilliant uh, defense strategy and get you out of trouble, but you're still going to die. And, but a preacher, every time you stand, you stand to do eternal business. Yes. Every time. Yes. The words of the preacher will echo in eternity. And it is the, the most, the most uh, a high, it's the highest calling on the planet that God could give unto man. Is that you and I would proclaim his truth. Can you imagine that God would entrust sinful man with his most prized possession. That is the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And every time you stand, fellas, it is to do eternal business. 
I'm afraid this evening many preachers don't take their calling into ministry seriously. Right. They do not realize that the God of the universe has chosen them and has placed His hand upon, uh, upon them. Uh, we as preachers ought to take our calling with the utmost soberness. Uh, listen, being a preacher is not a joke. It's, it's nothing funny. It is uh, not a call to glamour. It is a calling that God puts, puts on a man and he expects him to fulfill it. And we ought to take our calling very, very seriously. Now, this afternoon, uh, preacher, don't take your calling lightly. Because God doesn't take your calling lightly. It is more, listen to me, preaching is more than a 30 or 45 minute sermon. Yeah. It's a lifestyle. It is not just, I'll show up for church, spit out a few words, and then I'll go home and go back to my life. If you're going to have a successful ministry, you're going to have a ministry that honors God, your whole life revolves around ministry. Yeah. You have to build your life on the church, on the book, on the Lord Jesus, and on preaching the gospel. Right. If you try to be a part-time preacher, and I'm not talking about as far as labor, but I'm talking about mentally, and you try to separate your life into my life and my ministry, you will fail miserably. Mm -hmm. Everything I do revolves around being a preacher of the gospel. Everything. Mm -hmm. On Saturday night, you ask my church, you ask my wife. On Saturdays, I don't do anything. My wife and I do not go out to eat on Saturday. My wife and I do not go shopping on Saturday. I stay home and study and pray and prepare and make sure my heart is in tune. I cannot be out in the world all afternoon and then expect to come home and hear from God. So you know what you've got to do? You've got to lock yourself away to make sure you've got something and you're yeah. in tune with the Lord. And so listen, it's not a matter, well, I'll go uh, take my wife or my girlfriend out to eat and we'll go fellowship and hang out. Out and spend time and I'll come rolling in at 10 o'clock at night yeah. and, and I'll slap something together and get up and preach. Mm -hmm. Listen to me, you're going to dishonor God yeah. with yeah. that ministry. God called you and He has given eternity into your hands and what you have to say Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, revival meeting, camp meeting may literally change the course of eternity for somebody. Wow, yes, sir. And this morning we have dropped the ball. So today, I, want, I just want to give you seven attributes of a God-called preacher. Seven attributes that you need to make sure uh, that you apply to your life. Number one, the attire of a preacher. The first thing people are going to notice about you is your appearance. Yeah. How you look is very, very important. If you claim to be a preacher, you ought to look like a preacher. Amen. At my church, all of our preachers wear a tie. Uh, and listen, you ought, to, you ought to put a tie on when you stand to do eternal business. You say, now, preacher, wearing a tie ain't in the Bible. Well, listen, rolling them poison ivy ain't either. Uh, and so yeah. listen to me. Uh, you mean to tell... Now, well, let me, let me ask you something. Let's imagine you're on trial for murder, wrongly accused. You call the best defense attorney in the nation. And you're standing in court, and you're waiting on your attorney, and there's the judge. Then your attorney comes walking in. He's got a pair of cut-off blue jeans on and a wife beater T-shirt, a pair of flip-flops. Yeah. And he flops down and says, hey, uh, you ready to go to court? Don't worry about this. I got that. You know what you'd say? No, 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 no. Hold on, partner. What? You represent me, yeah. and my life is at stake. And, and, and listen, I want you to look like an attorney. I want you to act like an attorney. I want you to be dressed like an attorney. I want the judge and the jury and the people in this courtroom to, to respect you and listen to you. And as long as you're dressed like that, I'm going to prison forever, even though I'm not guilty. Right. You know why? You'd be angry. You would be upset if your attorney came in dressed like that. But how much more do you and I represent the Lord Jesus Christ? And brother, ought we, ought, ought we not to do our best to look like a representative of heaven yeah. and brother hear me the courtroom is watching you know who's on trial every time we go to church go to church the yeah. lord jesus christ you know who his, who his defending attorney is it's me and you we are presenting him to this congregation Amen. and he is on trial Amen. and they will vote uh, uh how they feel about the lord jesus right off the rip they're going to vote by how you look mm -hmm. that's right wow. that's right and listen, listen to me. If you won't bother to put a tie on, 
Let me tell you something. People aren't going to take you serious. If you don't have enough God or guts about you and put enough effort into your appearance that you'll cinch a tie up around your neck, what makes me take, think you've taken the time to study and pray and seek the Lord for something to say? You don't even care enough to dress right. Oh, boy. The preacher ought not come to church and look like he's going to a barbecue. Yeah. Look like he's going to a ball game. Yeah, if he's put that little effort into his appearance, how much, how much less effort has he put into his message? Yeah. Hear me tonight. Uh, listen, I don't care if you have facial hair. That, that ain't, that's, not, that's not what I'm saying. But listen, if you're going to have facial hair, keep it trim and look nice. If you're not, then shave and be clean shaven. Get a haircut, shine your shoes. Yeah. Look like a preacher when you stand and represent your Savior because Amen. people's lives are in the balance. Yes, Amen. Wow. Hey, by the way, may I say this? You don't want to give people anything, any kind of distraction. Right. Yeah. They How can't focus that? on what you're saying because they're saying, why is he wearing a polo shirt? Why is he wearing skinny jeans? That matters. <laughs> that matters, pretty sure. Yeah. Mm. They can't hear what you're saying because your appearance is screaming at them. Right. The attire of a preacher, it's important. May I say this? Not just in the pulpit, but out of the pulpit. Listen. Uh, don't look like a reject from a boy band. Mm. Even if you ain't in the pulpit. Amen. Boy. Hey, thug life. Amen. Dress up. Amen. Yeah. Pull your pants up and look like a preacher. Again, being a preacher is more than 30 or 45 minutes. Being a preacher is a 24-hour, seven-day-a-week job. Yeah. That means, uh, a brother, when, when I crawl out of bed in the morning, I'm not going to run uptown and have a wife beat her on a pair of cutoffs. And, yes. You know why? Uh, brother, because I'm still a preacher even though I'm not in the pulpit. Your attire matters. And listen, you know what you're saying? If you relax your standard, I can tell how important God is to you by the way you dress. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah. That's the truth. It's important, the attire of a preacher. Listen, brother, look like a preacher all the time. And then want to whine and cry, pray for me that God will use me. Yeah. Well, you ain't put no effort into God using you. Yeah. Even when my preachers in my church aren't preaching, they show up in a tie. Mm -hmm. They show up dressed right. Sure. You say, preacher, you're a little bit legalistic. No, no, 40 years ago, uh, uh, every preacher wore a tie and every preacher dressed right and every preacher showed up for church like he was ready to go to meet yep. and he was ready to preach. Yes. The attire of a preacher. Secondly, let me say this, the attitude of the preacher. The next thing people are going to notice about you is your attitude. There is no place for pride or arrogance in the pulpit. Just because you're a preacher doesn't make you something special. The Apostle Paul put it this way. He said, For I think that God hath set forth the apostles last, as it were appointed to death. For we are made a spectacle unto the world, and to angels, and to men. We are not something special. We didn't call ourselves. God called us. We got nothing to brag about. And to have an arrogant, prideful, uh, 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 you know, attitude and spirit about you is a, a sure way to turn folks off. And uh, listen, I don't ever want my people or the people I'm preaching to to feel like I'm talking down to them. Yes, preach truth. Yes, preach straight. Yes, preach hard. But I don't want to have that arrogant, cocky, prideful, like I'm better than everybody kind of spirit. Hear me, God will beat that out of you. Yes, I, listen, take sir. it from me. Listen, I know what it is to get in a pulpit and God get all over you and God bless and God move and, and, and God use you and you walk out and you start sticking your chest out and start thinking, hey, look at me. Uh, but let me tell you what God's going to do. God's going to break um, you and rend that out of you and make you realize you're nothing. Anything gets done, it's all God that did it anyway. You're right. right. Nothing wrong with a preacher. Nothing worse than a preacher with a bad spirit. God help. I'm not talking about being being a sissy. I'm not talking about uh, 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 being a wimp. I'm not talking about uh, that. I'm talking about preaching truth, proclaiming truth. I'm talking about authority. But hear me. There's a difference between having authority and having a bad spirit and acting like you are God's gift. I re I heard a story one time. A young preacher came to preach at this church and he walked in, had his head. Uh, held high, had his chest, chest stuck out. Boy, he thought he was something. 
and he walks to the pulpit and boy he's, you can tell he's just eat up with pride and he goes to the pulpit and he opens his Bible and he starts to preach and, and he stutters and he stammers and, and he falls all over his words finally in embarrassment and shame he shuts his Bible I mean it's awful shuts his Bible and puts his head down and starts to walk out as he gets to the back road old man grabbed him by the arm and said son come here a minute he said if you'd have went up yeah. Like you came down, you could have came down yeah. like you went up. Oh, man. How about yeah. that? Yeah. Yeah. You know what pride is? It's, pride. it's you telling God you don't need His help. Mm-hmm. That's right. That you can preach on your own. Listen, uh, uh, brother, you ought to have some humility. You need God to anoint the message. You need God to bless the message. You need God to move upon the message. Hear me, you can present truth to their ear, but only God can drive it down in their heart. Only God can bear fruit from the message down in their heart. You can present it to their ear, and you can speak to their intellect, and you can speak to their heart. But if it bears fruit, if it if it produces change, it is God Himself that produces produces that change and you cannot do it right you can't Amen. trust me i've tried yeah I, i'll tell this story quickly i many years ago i was a young preacher and a woman in the church uh, where i was going to church woman had said some negative stuff about me i mean talked about me like i was a dog i know i'm shocked like you and uh, <laughs> so she she said some negative stuff about me i had to preach that wednesday night my pastor's out of town and i had to preach that wednesday night i thought i've got something for her Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You mark that down. I'm going to straighten that heifer out. Yeah. <laughs> so I put together a message on gossip. Yeah, Boom. There it is. Son, I went in breathing fire. I said, listen, uh, that long, you long tongue, long tongue Jezebel, you need to bring, your, bring that, that long tongue, put it on the altar. It ain't but 75 foot, but double it if you have to. I said, God will have more mercy on a pill. Then it will. Somebody goes around running around God's people and talking about and running them down. I mean, for 45 minutes, blistered that crowd. I give an invitation. Everybody came but her. (laughs) These people weeping and crying, apologizing to each other. And I thought, what's wrong with you? Go back to your seat. I'm shooting at her. (laughs) Service was over. I stood in the back and was shaking hands. People said, boy, I appreciate that preacher. I needed that. And my tongue's got away from me. I thank you for that. And boy, it's a blessing. And me and so and so had to get right, and you know. And while I'm shaking hands, this heifer who talked about me walked around behind me and stood right here and said, "This preacher, I don't care what they say about you. I still love you. <laughs> You're the very heifer I'm shooting at." <laughs> and the Holy Ghost dealt with my heart and said, "You will never be able right to fix them. Oh, right, yeah. only I, my soul." Can fix it. Yes. That's right. I wasted 45 minutes blistering her and it went. Yeah. She never even got it. Yeah. So. Listen, you know what you need? You, you need the Lord. So you got to have the right spirit and the right attitude. May I say this? You don't have to respond every time somebody says something negative about you. Right? Yes. Exactly. Amen. Amen. Keep your mouth shut and preach. Yes, preacher. Amen. Keep your mouth shut and preach. Let your ministry justify yes. and yes. let your ministry outlast that crowd who is talking about you. Keep your mouth shut. Preach the Bible. Have the right spirit, right attitude. I like what R.G. Lee said. R.G. Lee said somebody talked about him one time, lied on him, and said he went to that person and said, who told you that? And he, They told him. So he went to that person. And then he went to the next person. And he went to the next person. And he kept tracking that thing back. So it took him three months to track it back. And said when he finally tracked it back to the individual who lied on him, he said, do you know what I found? A liar. Yeah. He said when I asked him about it, they, you know what they said? I, I didn't say yeah. that. There it is. He said I wasted three months trying to track it down. When I found the individual, you know what they did? Lied. They lied again. Yeah, you yeah, can't yeah. track it down. Gosh, yeah. So why bother wasting your time? Yeah. Outlive it. Have the right attitude. Number three, the attributes of a preacher. Obedience is essential in a preacher. May I be honest with you? I I like what Brother Andrew said this morning. He said, if I tell you ten minutes, stay within your time limit. Hear me. I've heard, I've heard, I've heard it all. Well, preacher, I just got to preaching and I couldn't stop. Well, you're stopped now and you won't get started again. Mm-hmm. Not here. Yeah. Yeah. I've heard him say, Well, God just got on me and I No, he didn't. 
You say, yeah, yeah, he did. No, he didn't. God ain't going to bless uh, and go against what, you, what, you, what that pastor told you to do. He ain't going to do it. I don't care what you think, what you feel, what you believe. If I, I tell my guys, if, the past, if a preacher says, give me ten minutes, give them eight and sit down. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 If you cannot be obedient to a man you can see, uh, how can you ever be obedient to a God you cannot see? That's good. That's good. Yeah. Good. yeah. So hear me. Do what that pastor says. I travel quite a bit. I'm on the road all the time. And you know what I do? If that pastor says, hey, preacher, I heard you preach on worship. Uh, would you preach that message? Yes, sir. Yes, yep. mm-hmm. That's right. There ain't nothing for me to pray about. Right. 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 When yeah. that pastor yes, says, preacher. I heard you preach on grace, would you preach that message on grace? Absolutely. Man, that's good. Be happy to. That's good. Yep. You say, what do you do? I don't even pray about it. Nope. Yep. Right. If he ain't right, that's between him and God. But I'm going to do what he tells. Yeah, that's right. Right. If he tells me to preach it eight minutes, I'm going to preach seven and sit down. Yeah. Obedience, man. And listen, nobody uses a rebel. Nobody. Oh, yeah. Trust me, I've been doing this a long time. And i got a bunch of friends who are pastors. And if we're all in a meeting together and some guy says, uh, some preacher says, give me ten minutes. And a guy gets up and preaches fifteen or twenty. Not one of those guys will use it. Nope. You're cutting your own throat. You said, but I had to get it out. And, yeah, well, that'll be your last time. Yep. I'm just telling you, guys won't use you. You've got to have obedience. May I say this? Secondly, be kind. You don't have to. Listen, you can preach truth and proclaim truth with authority uh, without, without having a nasty disposition. Yeah. I've heard guys preach on hell like they're glad folks are going there. Oh, right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, right. Wrong spirit, man. Amen. Wrong spirit. Listen, be faithful. Why should God give you anything else to do when you won't be faithful to what He's already given you to do? If you won't be faithful to church, if you keep laying out on Wednesday night or Sunday night or Sunday school, why would, any, why would anybody want to listen to what you have to say? How can you tell anybody? How can you tell anybody uh, how to live yes. when you won't live it? Yeah, oh that's exactly right. Wow. Well, you need, to, you need to pray and read your Bible. You know what they're thinking? Yeah, you need to come to Sunday school. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm thinking. That's Amen. good preaching. Oh, yeah. Amen. You say, I want to get up and preach. Well, then be faithful where you're at. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Be consistent. Be faithful. May I say this? One of the missing attributes in preachers today is character. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Honesty. Stop lying. Tell the truth when you deal with people. Right. Stop being a liar. Yeah. You are rendering your testimony ineffective. Stop being a liar. Have some integrity. Have some character. If you tell a man something, then keep your word and do what you say you're going to do. You are ruining your testimony and you're ruining your ability to preach to people because you won't tell the truth and you won't be honest. I ain't never in my life seen a generation of preachers that are nothing but a bunch of liars. Wow. Yeah. My God, man, is it any wonder the world's going to hell when preachers won't even bother to tell the truth? Mm. Amen. That's right. Amen. Be honest. Have some integrity. Can I say this? Pay your bills. Yeah. Amen. Thank God. A credit, uh, listen, I understand problems happen. I understand. I ain't stupid. But a preacher ought not to have a credit score of 400. Right. Yeah, sure. yeah, right. I understand sometimes stuff comes up and something might get paid late. But generally speaking, listen, you ought to have a good credit score. Yeah. You ought to be able to, you ought to be, able to, to, to be uh, trustworthy. And listen, brother, if somebody tells you something, are you going to run gossip about it all over the country? My soul. Free soul. How are you ever going to pastor a church if your people can't come to you in confidence to tell you stuff exactly right. without you spreading it all over the church? That is exactly right. Come on now. I'm talking about character. And listen, you say, well, my character, I don't have very good character, then you're not going to be a very good preacher. Amen. What you do Monday through Saturday will affect how you preach on Sunday. Yes. Amen. 
You say, I want God to use me. Then have some character. Be honest. Have some integrity. Be hardworking. Be consistent. Be faithful. Have a good testimony. And the problem with a lot of preachers is they don't have any character. Yeah, that's yeah. right. You're telling it right. Mm-hmm. And listen, if you don't have any character, God can't use you. And God won't use you. May I say this? Don't go around asking preachers for meetings. Yeah. Nothing will turn a pastor off quicker than a young preacher saying, hey, can I come preach for you? And listen, I... Say what you want about me, but I, I, a lot of times I ain't got no filter. So when a young preacher says, hey, can I come preach for you? No. Why? <laughs> because you just asked me to come preach for me. Right. Yeah. right. What you should have done if you loved Jesus and you were as spiritual as you thought you were, you'd have went and prayed and said, Lord, burden Brother Rick to have me come to his church. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. Amen. Mm-hmm. Yep. My pastor would have skint me oh, yes. alive oh, yes. if I'd have ever asked to for some some if I could come preach for somebody. Now again, there's differences, right. uh, especially as a young preacher. You need to pay attention to that. Now listen, I'm friends with a lot of guys, and if I'm on vacation or I'm out of town or right. you know, and I'm going to be in that area, I'll call him and say, "Hey, I'm coming by. Going to be with you Sunday morning." But I let him invite me to preach. Right. Yeah. Right. But I will call him and give him a heads up and say, "Hey, I'm in town. I was going to come and be with you Sunday morning." Mm-hmm. And a lot of times you'll say, "Great, you can preach Sunday morning." Uh-huh. But if they don't, you know what I say? Okay, I'll, I, I, I just want to let you know. Okay, preacher, we'll see you Sunday morning. I'll come sit and enjoy it. Yeah. But I give him the opportunity. But, but listen, you run up to, a, to an older preacher saying, hey, can I come to your church and preach? No, you can't. Yeah. Right. I'm just telling you now, no. Yeah. You want to come to my church and preach? Let me tell you what you do. Pray and ask God to burden my heart to have you. Amen. And if God burdens my heart to have you, I promise you I'll call you. Yep. I promise you. But you, listen, you will turn pastors off that quick. By going to him, say, "Hey, can I come preach for you?" No, no, don't do it. God's the one who called you. Yeah, God's the one who puts yes. you in the ministry. God's the one who wants you to to preach. If God does that, then God will find you a place to preach. Yes, sir. Amen. God will find you a place. Yeah. I've been preaching, like I said, almost twenty four years. I've never one time, and in, in all of that time, ever asked a man to let me come preach ever, ever. And you know what? I'm as busy now as I've ever been. Yeah. And so here's the thing. Brother, if God wants you to go preach, he'll find you a spot. That's exactly now, I say this, number four, the amusements of a preacher. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We must be careful that we don't find our amusement in the world. Uh, Brother Saluter is dead on the money when he said, I don't know anybody's batting average in the, NBA, uh, in the uh, major leagues. I don't know anything about the NFL. I don't know what the score of the Super Bowl was. Yeah. I have no idea. Uh, about the most popular music. Can I be honest? I, 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 don't, I don't know the difference between an Xbox and a PlayStation. Yeah. I don't have any idea about any of that stuff. You know why? I am too busy trying to fulfill the calling that God has placed on my life. Amen. If you want to sit around and play video games all day, then you certainly have that right. But don't expect opportunities to preach. Don't expect God to open doors. Don't expect to preach in power and have the touch of God on you. Yeah. If you're going to sit around and play video games all day, and listen, by the way, some of that stuff just grieves the Holy Ghost to no end. Uh, some of those games I, 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 I saw just bi- I don't know anything about it but I saw bits and clips uh, uh, something called Grand Theft Auto oh uh, where they're beating people to death yeah. and shooting people and all yeah. that stuff. Mm-hmm. Do you really not think you're popping that junk into your head that it is a benefit spiritually? Why don't you grow up? Men yeah. Paul said when I became a man I put away childish yes. things. Listen it's time to grow up. Sell your Xbox sell your Playstation. Get your King James Bible out. Spend yeah. your time in prayer spend yes. your time in that book. Amen. Love God God, I, I, I love what Brother Wheeler said. He said, have you a spot where you can go pray? If you spend more time on an Xbox than you do in a prayer hey, closet, hey. you ain't never going to get nowhere. Yes. Listen, I'm, I ain't got time. Yes. Uh, listen, there's too many burdens, too many too many things going on, too many people need help for me yes. to waste my days uh, playing video games and watching football. And Listen, I'm a college football fan. I like it. I enjoy it. And you know what I do on Saturday? I, I Saturday evening, once I've got my Bible read, my praying done, my studying done, I'll flip it over and catch the scores across the bottom. That tape, it runs across the bottom. I'll say, how about that so-and-so won? How about that so-and-so lost? Then I cut it off and I, and I go get busy and I try to, I, listen, I might take eight, nine minutes just to see the scores who won. But other than that, I'm not sitting down wasting right. four hours on Saturday watching a ball game while the world's dying and going to hell. We are so uh, uh, we are so enamored with the amusements of the world that it has robbed us of our spiritual power and our spiritual Spiritual ability. Amen. Mm. Help us, sir. 
Amen, amen. You say, I want God to use me. Then put away those amusements. May I say number five, the anointing of a preacher. Every God-called preacher must have the touch of God resting on him. Yes. The Holy Ghost must anoint your ministry if it ever bears fruit. We study for something to say, and we pray for power on what we say. I have seen guys who studied. We, we were talking about this last night. Yeah. There are two camps in the, in the independent Baptist world. There is this camp. And all this camp wants to do is shout and run the aisles and have camp meeting and jubilee all the time. But they don't know a handful of Scripture. Right. They don't know the difference between the second advent and the rapture. They don't know anything about a dispensation. Uh, they don't know Thompson's got a chain or Schofield has a note. I mean, <laughs> they don't know about uh, you know, if you ask them why you're King James only, they say, because that's what my preacher said. That's what my grandma always used. Yeah. They, they don't know nothing about the Bible. Right. But all they're worried about is worship and, and, and praise and power and the God showing up. And, and listen, uh, I, to a point, there's nothing wrong with that. Then you got this other crowd over here. Now, they know every dispensation. They know what the big toe on the statue in the book of Daniel means. They know, uh, they know, listen, yeah. the difference between the second advent, first advent, ninth advent. They yeah. know yeah. they know everything from eternity to the millennial kingdom. They've got all their scripture lined out. But they're so dry and yeah. dead. Yeah. I mean, listen to me. It, it, is, it is the letter killeth, but the spirit giveth life. And hear, yeah. hear me tonight. Listen, if you're going to be a preacher, if you're going to be a real God called success preacher let me tell you what you better have you better have a whole bunch of this yep. but you better balance it with a whole bunch of this yeah right, right. you ought to have some you ought to, you ought to want to get in the glory you ought to want to preach in power yeah. you ought to want to have Amen. a touch of god Amen. on your life it's not enough to know a bunch of scripture it's not enough just to be able to shout and run out uh, brother you need both you need yeah. to grab both of those and pull them together yeah. and marry yeah. them in your ministry uh, listen brother I, 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 one thing, listen please don't think I'm being proud I'm just trying to tell you what the Lord's doing at my place I, I, I got up and taught all the dispensations and showed the difference I, and said look that's why this verse don't go here and I talked about those parables kingdom of heaven kingdom of God showed them the difference and said look you can see that parable don't even talk to you we can make practical application but doctrine ain't talking to you. And I got a big old dry uh, race board. A big old uh, your brother Andrew Saint. And I pull it out front and I begin to draw in front of my church. Talk about dispensations. Talk about right. doctrines. Talk about eternal security. Talk about why we don't keep the Sabbath. Talk about why water baptism doesn't say. I just finished teaching dispensations and talking about the difference in those. Then we came back on Sunday. The Holy Ghost showed up. I didn't even get to preach. People weeping and crying. Getting in the altar. Came back Sunday night and it got gooder. Uh, the Lord showed up again. I didn't even preach Sunday night. The Holy Ghost fell in that place heroin addict uh, made his way to an altar got delivered got Amen. glorious yeah. touched Amen. by God Amen. and God did something for hear me today hey, listen you need both study yes. your Bible like yeah. it all depends yeah. on you but you better pray and worship like it all depends on him Amen. you must marry Amen. those two if you're not careful Amen. you're going to get off in a ditch somewhere and you're either going to be dead as a hammer or you're going to, you ain't going to have no, no meat on right you. Amen. Amen. You know what makes people grow? That's exactly right. That book. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. Your opinion. <laughs> yeah. That don't help sister so-and-so back there who's got a sick baby. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You better believe it. What Cardi B sings about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That ain't right. helping that couple back there with marriage troubles. Right. Right. You pre Listen, I, I, trust me, I blister that crowd from Hollywood as much as anybody. But I don't spend all my time preaching on Hollywood. No. The no. Bible says, preach the word. word. Yep. Amen. Yes, that's right. Listen, you, the people you're preaching, you have no idea what's in a pew. Oh, yeah. There are broken hearts. There are people whose homes are fixing to be busted up. You've got folks with sick children. You got folks who have financial trouble. You got folks who physically are looking at surgery, maybe having cancer. You don't know who you're preaching to. And hear me, your opinion ain't gonna be enough. Nope. You need some book to give them that will help them. The only thing that makes God's people grow is giving them the book. Now you must balance that with worship, and you must balance that with raising your hand and saying Amen. Don't be an egghead. And, and uh, listen, like Doctor uh, Doctor Snazelbridge has got. 
got all his doctrine lined out, but it's like Jack Frost in the pulpit. No power, no unction, no liberty, no Holy Ghost. Uh, listen, uh, you can you can have both. Uh, we've, we've, we've raised a generation of preachers to believe you either have to be this or you have to be that, right. but you can't be both. That's a lie on the pit. You can have both. You can have doctrine. You yeah. can have knowledge. You can yeah. know to rightly divide. You can feed them doctrine. You can give them the book, but you can also have power, unction, and liberty, the Holy Ghost. You can have worship. Uh, you yeah. can have the Spirit of God move and bless. Yeah. You can have both. Yes, yes. Yeah. It does you no good to know every doctrine in the Bible if when you get up to preach it, it's dead as four o'clock. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. It does you no good to have a touch of God on you if you ain't got nothing to say. <laughs> yeah, amen. That's right. Yeah. Yep. You can have both. Yeah. Yep. You got to balance that book with the power of God. And it's not one or the other. It's essential that we have both. You must be anointed. And listen, I remember as a young preacher, I got sick of just getting up and saying words, hearing crickets. I got sick of people looking at their watch while I preached. Right. I really did. I got sick of it. I said, God, and then I'd hear another man get up and God would touch him. Yeah. And people weren't looking at their watches. People were like this, and then pretty soon big old tears started rolling down their face. They didn't do that when I preached. Right. And I, I went to God. I said, God, what does he have that I ain't God? Mm. What's the difference in him and me? I'm preaching the same book he's preaching. I never will forget, I was sitting in the camp meeting. And I said, God, I'd rather die and go home than to preach power. I said, I would. I'd, I'd rather die and go home. I'd rather you carry me home to heaven than me preach without a touch of God. I'm sick. I, I, listen, fellas, ain't you tired of just preaching? Yeah. yeah. Don't you want to see God do something with you? When you get up, don't you want to see God get on you and bless you and see sinners saved and saints get help? Man, the power of God. I was sitting in a camp meeting and a fella got up and preached on John chapter number 11 and he preached on loose me and let me go. Mm. God sat down in my lap that day. Mm. I crawled off my pew and I fell in an altar right here. I began to weep and this is what I told God. I ain't getting up till you touch me. Yeah. I ain't getting up. If they cut the lights out and they all go home, I'm standing right here and you touch me. I ain't, mm. I ain't leaving. Yeah. Oh, and listen, God came to where I was and touched me. He did something for me that day. Listen, I got up the, the next Sunday. I'd never seen a move in an altar. I'd never seen uh, folk get saved. I'd never seen any of that. I'd preached uh, uh, you know, a handful of times and, and God it, it just didn't have nothing on it. But God put it on me that day. <laughs> from that day to this it's been different I went home and taught my Sunday school class had 90 teenagers I got up and the Holy Ghost said preach on hell so I got up began to preach on hell when I did somebody else showed up while I was preaching mm. yeah. and it felt it felt like stand up brother Eric this is what it felt like I was standing there behind the pulpit and uh, as I was standing there this is what it felt like it felt like God slipped up behind me and start holding my hands up yeah. And son, yeah. when he did, the Holy Ghost fell in that place. <laughs> People began to weep and cry. Same message I'd preached before. Same point, same outline. But oh, there was a difference. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was the power of God. Yeah. Yeah. The Spirit of God came, sat down on me, and folks started coming. Start getting saved in my Sunday school class. Mm -hmm. We had camp meeting in my Sunday school. <laughs> yeah. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 year old kids just falling in an altar saying, I'm lost, I'm going to hell. I'd preach to them over and over and over. You say, what made the difference? That anointing touch of yeah. the Holy Ghost. Yeah. 
The world doesn't need another uh, uh, orator. You don't need a psychiatrist or a psychologist. The world needs old-fashioned, spirit-filled, Holy Ghost men of God that when they stand, the touch of God drips off of them. Amen. That's what we're missing. Lord help us. Amen. Aren't you tired of that? Aren't you tired of just getting up Flapping your gums. Don't you want to see God use you? You need power. Six. Number six. I'm going to talk about the applause of the preacher. If you're not careful, you will want people to love you. You will concern yourself with how they feel about you. But every God-called preacher I know had people that hated them. It's not my job to be liked. It's my job to preach truth. Stop worrying about everyone's opinion of you. Stop worrying about wanting everybody to brag on you and shake your hand. Every preacher in the Bible was hated. Elijah had Jezebel. John the Baptist had Herodias. Jesus had the Pharisees. We live in a generation of celebrity preachers. We, we have transformed the church into thinking that preachers are in the entertainment industry. Come on. That's it. Listen to me. I am not in the entertainment industry. That's exactly right. I love my people and I love the people that I preach to week to week around the country. But I love them enough to tell them the truth. Hmm. And hear me. If you're not careful, you will start tiptoeing and tap dancing and avoiding certain things because yeah. you're terrified that somebody might not like you. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. You will begin. You know what the Bible says? They loved the, appla- they loved the applause of men. Hear me. If you're not careful, you'll want this. Yep. Instead of a well done, thou good and faithful servant. Mm. Just a while back, I was in a huge church, huge church. Probably had four or five hundred. And uh, I, I typically don't do this. But I preach something new on the road. Normally, I don't preach anything new. Normally, I preach something that I've already preached. If it flops, it flops at my church. They've heard me preach enough flops. It don't hurt them. Uh, and so I normally, the new stuff gets preached at my church. But the Lord burdened my heart with a message. And it's rough. It's rough. And I thought, for just a moment, I thought, Lord, I want to be careful. I, I don't want to I don't want to offend that pastor or his church. The Lord said, Oh, so you'd rather offend me? I said, No, sir. She said, What'd you do? I got up and preached it. I wasn't ugly and hateful and nasty, but I got up and put the plow on the ground and preached it. When I got done, brother, they were three deep in the altar. Mm-hmm. Four hundred folks sitting there, they were three deep in the altar. And the preacher was the pastor was like this. He said, I'd never, never seen an invitation like it. Wow. You're gonna have to make a choice. You either gonna wanna be loved or you wanna be right. Yeah. Yeah. Because you can't be both. That's exactly right. If you're right, you ain't going to be loved. If you're loved, you ain't going to be right. Yeah. Amen. Stop worrying about applause. Preach a Bible. Number seven, the adversaries of the preacher. The world, the flesh, the devil, and the false brethren. Listen, tonight, there are many adversaries. The greatest adversary you have is the guy you look at in the mirror every day. Yes. I like what Doc used to say. He said, I'd get up and start to shave and say, what you up to this morning? (laughs) Yeah. As he looked in the mirror. Yeah. That's the greatest truth. Hear me. Two things get more preachers than anything else. Two of them. Are you ready? Here they they are. Number one, this knocked out more preachers from from Samson's day on, and that's women. Yep. Women. Amen. Amen. Yeah. I have a rule. I never meet with a woman alone. Ever. Amen. For no reason. Ever. Ever. Absolutely. Ever. I don't care. She said, I don't want to. I said, look, if you can't talk to me and my wife together, then we don't need we to talk. We talking. Yep. That's exactly well, right. Well, I don't want your wife to know. Well, then you must not want me to know. Because I refuse to meet with a woman alone. Ever. Ever. Smart. You better put that rule in place. Yes. Because, listen, if the devil got Samson, he'll get you. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. I've known great preachers. <laughs> Through the years. And Brother Andrew knows the one I'm talking about. Was my hero for many, many years. Right. Could do no wrong. 
until he fouled up and had an affair. Mm -hmm. Right? Yep. I love him, I ain't mad at him, he got right, and he's doing good, and that's, that's wonderful. And I thought if the devil can get him, oh, no. he, can get anybody. he can get me. Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. You say, don't you, tru don't you trust yourself? I don't trust you, much less me. Right. Yeah. You better be careful. Nothing will knock a touch of God off you and wreck you like a woman. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Number two, not only women, but money. Yep. Yeah. Money gets the rest of it. Mm -hmm. You better be very careful. You'll find yourself again tiptoeing and tap dancing around the message because you're worried about your love offering. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh boy. Oh yes. Yeah. Well, I can't preach that because if I do, them folk will get mad and they might. They won't give. I won't get a good love offer. It's human nature, man. But hear me, I'm booked 52 weeks a year right down there in Okatee, South Carolina. <laughs> yep. If they don't pay me, my church has a rule, Brother Wheeler, if, if I go preach somewhere and the church either can't afford to pay me or they don't pay me like they should, when I get home, my church covers the difference wow. that they should have paid me. Yeah. You know what that did for me? I go in anywhere, preach anything. And if they don't want to pay me, I pick up a phone call my treasurer. He'll write me a check. It's yeah. <laughs> exactly right. Amen. It's exactly right. You say, what did it say? Are you smart enough to figure that out? No, my church was. They prayed about it. And they said, Preacher, we want you taken care of on the road. And so anything you need, you swipe your church card, anything that you need. And if they don't pay you uh, like they should or if they can't afford to pay you, let us know. Our church will, will cover your love offering for the mm. week. <laughs> yeah. And what, they didn't even realize what they were doing because now I got the liberty to go in and preach anything I want to anywhere. Yeah, yeah. And if they run me off, I just go home. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I go home, cut my grass, love my wife, catch a catfish. Yeah. <laughs> About that. Amen. I'm just saying, fellas, you're going to have to make up your mind. Listen, Paul said, I've counted all things but loss. That's right. That I may win Christ. Yeah. Here, here's the thing. Here, this is what I do, and I'm done. I'll say this, and I'm done. Listen to me. Every morning when, you, when your feet hit the floor, you're going to have to ask yourself this question. Who am I going to live for today? Am I going to live for me? Or am I going to live for Jesus? Mm. And if you choose you, you'll never be the preacher God wants you to be. That's right. You'll never pastor the church God wants you to pastor. You'll never be the evangelist that God wants you to be. But every day when you make that sacrifice and say, I'm going to live for him, Instead of me, that's the man God uses. Amen. 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 Boy, I sure would like to catch that game. And something nudges you and say, you need to go read your Bible. Mm. I know y'all more spiritual than me. That's never happened to anybody but me. <laughs> but the Holy Ghost say, you know, you need to go read your Bible. At that moment, you're going to make a decision. Amen. Am I going to live for me and watch a game? Am I going to live for God and go read my Bible? Mm -hmm. You say, all my friends are going out to eat. And the Holy Ghost says, you need to go pray. Yeah. Yeah. About that. You're going to live for yourself and go out with your friends? Mm. You're going to live for God and yeah. go pray. My church had a little game night kind of thing. Some of my folks in my church get together. And they said, preacher, we want you to come. We want you to come. I said, I'll, I'll do my best. If I'm home, I'll do my best. On that day... This is what I felt like. I felt like spiritually I, I wasn't prepared to preach on Sunday. Mm. I told my wife, my wife said, I'm going to go over there. They, they make a little, they have a little finger foods and stuff, and they hang out and fellowship a little bit. And uh, my wife said, I'm, I'm going to go. She said, you ready? And I said, I ain't going. She said, what? I said, babe, I, I got to preach. I said, you know so-and-so what they're going through. You know so-and-so what's happening to them. You know what's happening to so-and-so. Yep. I said, more than I, they need me at game night, they need me in the pulpit. Yes. Yes. yes, exactly. Oh, yes. And I said, I'm going to stay home. I said, I'm going to go read my Bible and go pray. I'm going to try to walk with God. And maybe God will give me a little something to help my folks. Yeah. Oh, my. Bless your maybe, heart. Maybe God will put a little touch on me. I can preach to them and help them. And, <laughs> and maybe they can find hope and encouragement to at least make it another week. While the rest of them's enjoying it. Yeah. While the rest of them's fellowshipping. Yeah. 
you know where I'm at? I'm off in a prayer closet somewhere by myself. Yeah. Oh, God. Listen, fellas, there's some sacrifices you're going to have to make. Yes. yes. If you want God to use you and you want to be the preacher God wants you to be, oh, my. hear me, it's going to cost you something. That's right. A lot of lonely nights. Sure. A lot of nights I'd be like to be laying in bed beside my wife, but at 2.30, 3 o'clock on a Saturday night, I'm off in my prayer closet begging God for a touch, begging God for the message. Yeah. While everybody else is having fun. You know where the real preacher finds himself? Finds himself off in his prayer closet. Mm. Amen. Begging and pleading with God for power. Is that, is that you? You willing to do that? You say, I want God to use me. You willing to do that? Mm. I ain't worried about your applause. I ain't worried about what people think. I ain't worried about being popular. I just want God. And when this thing's over, and when it's all said and done, and I stand before my blood-soaked, blood-stained Redeemer, I can lay my sword at His feet mm-hmm. and say, God, I know I'm a failure. Mm-hmm. I know I've missed it more than once, God. But Lord, I did my best mm-hmm. with what You gave me. I paid the price and I made the sacrifice to honor and glorify you. That's what it's going to take. Mm. That's good preaching. Let me ask you something, preachers. I'm done. I'm done. Let me ask you something. What kind of radio what kind of music you got on your radio? Oh boy. But you want God to use you. Yeah. Right. You can't even you ain't even got enough God about you to cut the radio off. Come on. Hey man. You're, stu- you're too worried about your stinking flesh, pleasing it. How you gonna have a touch? Yeah. How you gonna make a difference? Yeah. You ain't you ain't got enough Holy Ghost about you. Turn that trash off. Yeah. I just want him. My head to God, I'm a flop. I'm a failure. God knows. I've made a lot of mistakes, but hear me tonight at 50 years old, 24 years in, I'm closer to the end than I am the beginning, but hear me, I just want. I just want God to touch me and use me and I can make a difference for him. That's all I want. Amen. That's my soul. I don't care what you think. I don't care about your popularity. I don't care about your money. I don't care about being a celebrity. I don't care about uh, preaching 55 weeks a year and uh, preaching in these great big meetings and everybody knowing my name. I just want God to touch me and use me to be a blessing to somebody. Yeah. Hey. What's your desire? Yeah. Yeah. You can't preach because you're too worried about what that little girl sitting in the congregation thinks. Oh, God. Does she like my preaching? <laughs> I'm just saying, fellas. If we're going to do it, we're going to pay the price. I'm done. Preacher, that's good. Amen. Mm-hmm. Amen. Well, we got supper downstairs right now. And uh, I know this is a little unusual, but I feel like we ought to give an altar call. That's good. And I'm not talking about you just come down here and say, Lord, help me do better. No, I'm, I'm talking about I think maybe some of us need to get in this altar and do some business with the Lord yeah. like right now. Yeah. Like right now.